This is controlling for multiple statistical comparisons. Let's just review quickly what a type one error is. A type one error or a false positive is incorrectly re rejecting a null hypothesis in favor of the accepted hypothesis or the hypothesis used in the study. This really hinges upon the alpha value itself, the alpha value or the threshold for statistical significance. Typically we use an alpha of 0 0.05, which means that less than there's a 5% chance the data being tested could have occurred under the null hypothesis. Another way to put it is there's a one in 20 chance that we got the results by random chance. Well, let's come up with a hypothesis that has no basis in reality. Let's pretend that hats, we hypothesize that hats cause glaucoma. Now we can have multiple comparisons. Those but we can have compare people who do or do not have hats, but let's look at what would really happen. If we compare those people who wore hats versus those who didn't wear hats, 19 out of 20 times, hats would not be associated with glaucoma. That's because there's no connection whatsoever with hat wearing and glaucoma. But if we did it 20 times and compared 20 separate groups, hats and no hats, eventually one of those groups by random chance would be statistically significant. In this example, group 16 or comparison 16 had a p-value of 0 0.03. This is that type A1 error we're talking about, where we've randomly decided that people who wear hats are at higher risk of glaucoma than those that don't by an error in statistics. But we could also do that in a different way. We could compare multiple times. Maybe it's not just that they wear hats or not. Maybe it's the hat size that causes glaucoma. Maybe the hat color, maybe the hat type, the hat brim, or maybe even having feathers in their hat increases our risk factor for glaucoma. Just so we're clear, in no situation do hats cause glaucoma. If we did that though, and did five different comparisons, we'd increase our risk for a type error for each comparison by 0.05%. Now that we've done that five times, we have a 25% chance of a type one error where we say that some effect of hats causes glaucoma. Again, I'm gonna emphasize, in no way do hats cause glaucoma. That is silly. It's just an example for this course. Where it does come into comparisons though, is in real world studies where we're looking at multiple comparisons. Here's an example of looking at genetic variables at risk for actually developing open angle glaucoma. Because there's so many different possible loci or different genes that we could compare, there's lots of comparisons when we're looking for the effect of glaucoma based upon the genes. As an example in this study, there's over 700,000 possible loci across more than 1,000 individuals. That would result, if you think about it, in 35,000 different type one errors if we only accepted 0.05 as the statistical effect of having glaucoma versus not based upon these genes. So what that really means though is multiple comparisons are a problem. And they occur when we consider multiple, many st st statistical comparisons at the same time. The more inferences we make, the more likely we have an erroneous inference, which is a type one error. How do we control for that? We reduce our alpha value or our cutoff value based upon the number of comparisons. If we reduce the alpha value, it makes it harder and harder to have type one errors. So instead of using a 0.05, maybe we go to 0.01 or 0.001, et cetera. One of those corrections that's the most commonly used, also the most strictest of them, is the Bonferroni correction. A Bonferroni correction is one method of doing that by simply reducing the alpha value by the number of comparisons. To do a Bonferroni, we take the alpha value and divide it by the number of comparisons that we have. And this gives us our new alpha value that will be our cutoff to consider something statistically significant. Let's go back to our silly example of hats causing glaucoma. In our example, we have five different comparisons we're doing hat size, hat color, hat type, brim, and feathers. That's five different comparisons. If our initial alpha value is 0.05, we divide 0.05 by five, the number of comparisons we're doing. And that res results in our new alpha value of 0.01 as our cutoff. Now, there are a number of different comparisons out there. Here's five of them that are shown as an examples. Depending on the type of study you're doing, you might wanna use one of these other comparisons. As an example, it would be unrealistic as Bonforti is the most strict correction that's out there 
to use that in our genetics example. If there were 700,000 loci that we're comparing, that would just result in a p-value cutoff of 0 0.00000007. Obviously, that would be ridiculous to use that cutoff. We'd find probably no genes that are associated with glaucoma if we had that cutoff. In that case, you might use one of these other comparisons. Thank you.